What the Biden administration is doing about COVID is a crime, but they just care about those guns that commit the crime, not the humans who commit crimes, just the guns themselves. And then there's inflation and literally getting crapped on. Let me explain. What an interesting week we've had. It all started with a bunch of A-listers from the political world getting the Rona, but shh, don't tell anyone. Then we've had more on Hunter Biden's laptop that we can talk about now since the election's over and cover-ups are okay in the past tense. And just so you know, Ukraine and Russia is still a thing. And so you know consumer prices are only up 8.5%. And that's only the highest it's been since you know, more than 40 years ago when Biden was almost a decade into ruining others' lives through his political service. But none of that is Joe's fault. I'm not going to wait to take action to help American families. I'm doing everything within my power by executive orders to bring down the price and address the Putin price hike. We saw today's inflation data. 70% of the increase in prices in March came from Putin's price hike in gasoline. See? See? This is inflation since Putin invaded Ukraine. Except it's not. That red oval shows inflation since Joe Biden was inaugurated. So keep telling lies, Joey. Was anyone else distracted by what was on Joe's coat? It's not hyperbole. It's about being made in America. A lot of that has, has to do with this industry. The idiom goes, don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. But a bird just crapped on the president and he proceeded to tell America it's raining. And if it really was corn silage, like Biden's communications director claims, then Joe still got a little golden shower on him. Enough bodily function talk. Let's pivot to the important things that Joe's been talking about. And the, and the only woman truck driver ever knew I met that day, she said, this is big mama, no room. <laughs> Swear to God, true story. <laughs> Swear to God. He said, he said, I've got a United States senator driving my truck. She said, I got the damn president in mind. So what? <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was a very powerful guy. Anyway. Anyway, let's get to today's question. What is the biggest pivot tactic out of the Biden administration? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And now I'll pivot by asking you to share this video so others can see all of the distractions. Now back to Joe's line. What he said in that clip was only the second half of the story that he bumbled through, which includes now his claim of at least three times in the past year that he used to drive 18 wheelers. No evidence has been produced, but Joe keeps peddling the lie and media members keep massaging it for him or just letting him carry on telling the same old story. And so during the trucker strike years later when I was a young senator, I was a, there was a guy who uh, ran steel from Deemer Steel out to Ohio. And uh, so I decided to ride out with him to see what it was like on the strike. And I was driving, going through Shiloh, Ohio. And I was driving, going through Shiloh, Ohio. And, uh, and he, he was, his handle was Big Ten. And remember everybody, all the truck stops were being blockaded at the time during the strike. And he... Uh, he called, he said, Big Ten wanting to come in. I forget exactly how he said it. You also forgot exactly everything in the story because, again, there is no evidence that Biden ever drove an 18-wheeler. And maybe it's because we are told he's all about the electric vehicles, and, you know, you should be too. This is a president who always talks about the power of our example. Mm -hmm. Does he own an electric vehicle? Presidents of the United States don't do a lot of driving. He's posted videos where he's revving the engine of his Corvette in Wilmington. He owns cars. And he also has driven electric vehicles as president, as, as to give a model to the rest of the country. Does he own one? I think the president's record on this is clear, Peter. Presidents of the United States, current, and when they are no longer, typically are not doing a lot of driving. That's because they're so old and their eyes can't muster the strength to see distances. And yes, I know the real reason they don't drive, so you can save your comments. Anyway, that clip was just one month ago when Peter Ducey questioned Jen Psaki about the electric vehicles. And then we were promptly all told to buy an electric vehicle because money grows on trees. 
you know, with all of that Hunter Biden cash pulled from some G-strings, I'm sure Joe could afford the $64,000 price tag for the electric vehicles. But even if that's too much to spend on a vehicle, like most people making a middle class wage would attest, take solace in knowing you'll save money over the lifespan of the electric vehicle. Department of Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm reassured us of this little fact. Uh, these vehicles are a gift that keeps on giving. Let me just say, um, as an example of electric vehicle benefits, $6,000 will be the savings for the purchaser of an electric vehicle over the, over the course of the lifetime of that vehicle because it's so low maintenance, because there are so few moving parts. The moving parts are what gets you. That's why you find electric vehicles or robots, which can be turned off. Which brings us to... Where in the world is Kamalama Lama Ding Dong? <laughs> the robot that is Kamalama brings us into the charade of COVID right now. Like Joe, Kamala was also blabbering from behind a podium a few times this past week. They sent her off to a school where she could roam free and maskless while the children must be muzzled and put on display. May as well put up the plexiglass and charge some admission. I am so happy to be surrounded by our young leaders. I'm telling you, this is a highlight of, of, of being vice president, is to be around all of our young leaders. I'm so happy to be with you all today, and I'm so proud of you. I guess it isn't as bad as what's happening right now in Shanghai. There is growing outrage over the Chinese government's increasingly hard, harsh COVID restrictions in the biggest city in China. People are struggling to get access to food, screaming on the streets in frustration. There was a dog beaten to death by a COVID prevention worker after finding out its owner was infected. And it comes as Shanghai, despite this unbelievable shutdown, saw more than 26,000 new infections on Sunday, which is a record. But that's to be expected in the dictatorial land of China, not here in the United States. Yet mask off for all those A-listers in big wig Washington because all for thee and none for me. And they'll be defended to the very last drop of their highfalutin drink of choice since they are important people doing important things like overseeing the confirmation of a Supreme Court justice. The CDC says for people exposed to COVID, up to date on their COVID-19 vaccinations, do not go to places where you are unable to wear a well-fitting mask. So why is she here at the White House today, giving the new Supreme Court justice a big hug with no mask? You mean when she gave her a, mask, a hug outside? Yes. She was outside. Does the CDC uh, say the people who are in close contact can give people hugs outside? We know, Peter, that outside it is uh, it is a, you are it's you can benefit significantly being outside. That's why we have we had the event outside today. I will tell you that the vice president has been wearing a mask inside. When there was a private greet, they were all wearing masks. Uh, uh, we before saw they she went wasn't up. wearing a mask yesterday at the Senate. The, she was uh, playing an important role in, in confirming or overseeing the confirmation of the first black woman to the Supreme Court. Oh, please tell me more about this. Well, I would say that the vice president and the president and all of us abide by what the CDC protocols are. It was an emotional day. It was a historic day. And there were moments when she was not wearing a mask inside, including in a photo. But she was wearing it 99.9% .9 of the time. Mm. It's almost like they know when the Rona is going to travel, and so they know when to not wear the mask. That logic only works in their minds. Meanwhile, the most prestigious bougie of the Washington bunch is Nancy Pelosi, all 82 years of what's left of the original body, which is not much. She done gone messed up and got the Rona. But it's okay that she was just hovering over the 79-year-old, very frail president the day before and giving him a handshake. That's not considered close contact in the eyes of the masters. And Pelosi's not alone. Attorney General Merrick Garland got it. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo got it. And just a slew of others who rank high enough to tell us all to stay masked up. Or rather, in New York City, right now, just those two to four-year-olds must remain masked thanks to the policy of Mayor Eric Adams. Oh wait, not just little kids in New York City, looks like Philadelphia has now announced it's going to reinstate the indoor mask mandate. Well then, because doing all of these things is going to help the Democrats come November. 
So the Biden administration must pivot off of the things not working for them, which is to say everything, and attempt to really bust some balls by announcing a crackdown on self-assembled firearms, commonly called ghost guns. This is the gun. It's not hard to put together. A little drill, hand drill at home. Doesn't take very long. Anyone can order it in the mail. Anyone. Folks, a felon, a terrorist, a domestic abuser can go from a gun kit to a gun in as little as 30 minutes. Buyers aren't required to pass background checks because guns have no serial numbers, these guns. When they show up at a crime scene, they can't be traced. And where a lot of the actual gun crimes are happening have been allowed by the Biden administration and big city mayors because they don't let officers do their jobs. Cops have been told they are the problem and must stand down. Law enforcement is sounding the alarm. Our communities are paying the price and we're acting. Today, the United States Department of Justice is making it illegal for a business to manufacture one of these kits without a serial number. Illegal. The answer is not to defund the police, it's to fund the police and give them the tools and training to support they need to be better partners and protectors of our communities in need. Oh, so cops are the ones who can protect the communities. I'm glad we can say that again. Also in his speech, Biden announced his nominee for director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives as Steve Dettelbach. He's only a former U.S. attorney during the Obama presidency because, you know, the two of them were Harvard bros. But this isn't about him. Joe cares more about his son. I also want to thank my incredible, supportive and often patient family who are here. Uh, my wonderful wife, Carol, uh, and my children. Allie and David, please. If he's 16 years old, I'm going to draft him. <laughs> please don't let that be a euphemism. What we've learned this past week is no matter how bad Biden acts as president, he can't stop, won't stop focusing on his agenda. That helps no one. Nobody is a better president than Joe Biden. And I mean that having nobody in the role would actually be better than having Joe Biden. Until that day happens, make sure to focus on what matters, faith, family, and friends. And if you could, please share this video real quick once. Until next time, stay healthy, America.